Google advertises Go to be a lightweight version of Android that can run on really, really low-end phones with 1 gig or even 512 megabytes of RAM, as well as taking up less storage space. So I bought the most for I mean cheapest Android Go smartphone I can buy. The Philippine map waving my phone, my A11. With a quad-core Cortex-A7 based chip, 512 megabytes of RAM, and 4 gigs of internal storage. Does Oreo in Go form hold true to its promise? This is a no-frills phone and we will give it a no-frills unboxing. So, this is an and this is my phone, my A11. This is a very, very affordable phone at 35 US dollars or 1,900 Philippine pesos. And it is, I'm not really expecting a lot from the phone as long as it is good enough. So we got the charger, we got micro USB cable. Very good instead of that all-in-one Woolworth thing. Um, let's see, we have some crappy headphones, quick start guide and a sticker some reason oh right we need to put the battery in so so one thing's for sure so of course for this price point expect everything plastic the screen is plastic the body is plastic don't expect more than that the fact that this phone should work we should be on oh yes wait what it didn't alarm that has got to be the worst unboxing on the internet. But hey, it's one minute, no bullshit. And as you can see, it is relatively stock. I mean, it doesn't have a lot. And honestly, that's a good thing. So we don't have to deal with other crap and bloat. So now I'm just really getting the feel of the operating system and it is very smooth. In fact, it's even smoother than my Galaxy S2 with a custom ROM. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and settle down into this phone. Put my Google account, install some of my apps. I mean, it only has four gigabytes of internal storage, so that's something. I'm also gonna have to install a bunch of, uninstall a bunch of crap, like what is this brown portal? This video is gonna be tackling the more technical stuff. The phone's hardware specs and a detailed software experience on the phone with such low-end specs. For the consumer-friendly review of the phone, click here and pick either for the English or Filipino review. So I have used a phone with an almost identical processor to this phone. It's a Cherry Mobile One 2015. It also it had a MediaSec MT 6582M, 1.3 gigahertz, Cortex A7 quad core. The My A11 uses the MT6580, which is basically identical to this. So the typical struggles for an old architecture CPUs like this, as well as this, this one is a dual core, Cortex A9. This is the Galaxy S, my good old Galaxy S2, is when it's fresh from a restart, it's very laggy as it takes a minute or two to like load things up in the background. And if it's connected to the internet, oh boy, this thing is going to lag. So I'm actually surprised how well Oreo runs on something that has also an old CPU architecture. And the thing is, if you're used to a more powerful smartphone, you're definitely going to notice the speed difference between something with an older architecture versus like a top of the line brand new architecture. So things like navigating web pages is also a struggle. So this one, it seems to be handling GSM Arena fine. Sometimes it actually doesn't. So let's go ahead and install Spotify. So you can see this thing is actually more bottlenecked by the CPU. Like it feels like my old Galaxy S2 performance wise. We're also gonna be installing a simple social media app. I wanna get Twitter for this. Because of Android Go, so I'm gonna start delving into Android Go a bit. This thing boots up very fast. Like it can boot up in like a minute or two and you're good to go. The way that Android got trimmed, I honestly wish should have been done on more powerful phones as well. 
Now let's delve into RAM. So the reason I installed Spotify is, well, it's now my go-to music app. So we're going to drop the volume to... I mean, it's still going to play in the background. I just don't want a copyright strike. So it does remember your... We were here previously. And as you can see, the phone is really starting to struggle now. Actually, let me do it right this time. Let's kick off. Let's get rid of Spotify. Now I made sure that nothing else is running in the background. So we got GSM Arena. Okay. And then let's try Android. I think this is Android Central. Yeah. So let's see. Let's get it to load. Now let's switch to GSM Arena. And look at that. It's Apparently it still kicks it out of RAM. All right. Let's go back to Qualcomm. Yep. There's nothing else running in the background. Like nothing at all. Open calendar, for example, because let's say you need to text something and then, hmm. oh, there's the, the flea market thing that I'm going to be attending to, maybe, that thing. Go to messages, apparently that still kicks it out of RAM. <laughs> Normally it would work. Actually, no, it did work. Let's, let's go peep. Uh, let's see how far, how you could find... How fine 512 megabytes of RAM is. Let's try Messenger. Okay. Okay. Let's see if the calendar got kicked. Yep. Calendar got kicked. So at most you could have like two apps. Like two very lightweight apps running at the same time. Without being kicked out of RAM. So I think I, I, think I got the point across. It's proper Android Oreo on this phone. It is running Android Oreo. It's just that. It's kind of stripped down and half a gig of RAM is still going to limit you, mainly for multitasking. So the next thing I want to tackle is storage. So another thing that Android Go is touting is that it is taking up less space. Like Android itself would be taking up less space. So I would still applaud the developers who worked on Android Go to make it use as little space as possible. Now the thing is, most of the Android Oreo Go phones that are shown in, I think it was Google I.O. Even though it's the same, sim well, similar processor, it would have like 1 gigabyte of RAM and 8 gigs of storage. Well, we already saw that this thing has 512 megabytes of RAM, so that's something. If you saw in the box earlier, this thing has a measly 4 gigabytes of internal storage. And if you look closely... Android system is already using 2.3 gigabytes of it. And then the other apps, I guess all the other apps, using already 1.3 gig. What's What else is left? And that is why I actually removed Spotify. Because it's actually taking up quite a huge amount of space. And huge amount of space is in it's using like 100 megabytes of storage. Oh my god, that's a lot. My biggest issue with this phone was actually the storage, not the RAM. The RAM bit, as long as you just single task, you'll be fine. The storage is way too small. They could have cheaped out elsewhere, maybe not include headphones at all, just so it could have eight gigs of internal storage. It's way too small. Out of the box, when it got this thing, it had like, 2 gigs of free space. Now, Google, like Android Go does remedy this with Android Go apps. Maps Go, Files Go, Google Go, Gmail Go, stripped down. So not just the operating system, but also the essential Google apps are stripped down so it would, so it would use less space. But you do have a lot of compromises. For example, the YouTube Go app is extremely stripped down. So as you can see... This thing is super stripped down. I don't even have access to my subscriptions. I don't have access to my channel. Most you could like search for videos. And then this is basically your home screen. You just refresh. It's scrapped. And this thing just says downloads. The YouTube Go app is way too stripped down. But the thing with the Google Go apps, you don't really lose out. Actually, no, you are losing out. Who am I kidding? This is the Metro Manila area. Good luck pinpointing where I am. And no, it's not the star for some... I'm not sure why there's a star way over there in Makati. That's weird. It's a star there. City of Dreams. I am currently looking at City of Dreams on a phone that is cheaper than a buffet there. <laughs> anyway, rambled a bit. Let's go back to the limited storage. Might as well. They could have just 
fit this thing, adding a bit more to the price. Like how much would it cost to add an extra four gigs of storage on this phone? I bought an eight gigabyte SD card. You're gonna have to buy it anyway to store anything else really. Now, here's the thing. Their Android has a feature where I could format it as an internal storage. Formatting the SD card as internal storage would give it the ability to actually install apps to the SD card. It's more trouble than it's worth. I wish this phone just had more storage. Uh, it's going to be mounted during boot. So if you actually don't have the micro SD card formatted as internal in this phone, it's actually going to be looking for that SD card and yeah. This is a weird bug I experience. It's not using the SD card by default. For some reason, it's taking up internal storage when I use the camera for photos or videos, no matter what. SD card contents not visible via MTP. So if you plug this thing to a computer, nope, you won't be able to see the contents of the internal storage. And here's a big bummer. SD card is going to be encrypted. Like it's physically tied to this phone, basically. That SD card is going to be basically tied to this phone. Autofocus, come on, get your together come on there we go so here's the thing about the camera as well so we're here in the lock screen i haven't launched the camera yet let's open the camera that's not bad like it's not slow to open the camera app now the camera is going to be lamography a very beautiful lamography camera Check the full review for like the proper camera comparison. But at this point, I just want to show five megapixel fixed focus camera. And once the camera has a fixed focus, you don't expect it to be sharp because you know that they have already cheaped out on the optics. I don't know how good of a sensor it has because it most likely has crappy cheaped out lens. The images are soft and dull. I mean, it's really just enough to get a picture and that's it. The video is 720p and like, whoa, 720p video on such a cheap phone. 720p, 20 frames per second at like five or six megabits. It has mono audio and audio as in it is absolute chip audio. It has a 3GP file. The last time I dealt with those files is... When was that? Oh yeah, my Nokia 6600. It also has a 2 megapixel selfie camera that I actually haven't tried yet. Because I really don't give a shit about the selfie camera. It's honestly just good enough for, let's say, something like video chat. And this is well lit, by the way. Like, I have one, two, three, four. Four lights. Actually, no. Five lights. And it's still kind of soft. Now let's take another shot, but this time, well lit. Now I'm going to be showing that in editing. Right, took out that light, um, took out this light. This is going to be a crappy picture. Ah, oh, juicy lamography, yeah. Another thing I'm going to be talking about on this phone is, as you can see, the shots are actually looking worse on this screen. So the screen resolution of this screen is like 480 by 800, which is actually pretty decent. Like, here's my Galaxy S2. This thing also has a 480 by 800 display resolution. The iPhone 4S during this time had a 640 by 1000 something. But this is an AMOLED screen, like, which as you can see, if you rotate it to the sides, there is absolutely no color shift. The colors is nice and rich. This as expected, at this point is as expected, of course it's gonna have this. It's going to have a very washed out, cheap TN display. So how bad is the TN panel? Well, actually left and right, it is not too bad. And colors is, well, there is colors. This is actually a lot more similar to, let's say, like my laptop. Turn it this way and blah. That is awful. Ooh. And the way that you would use a camera is usually like landscape. The thing is, if you're like someone with two eyes, which most of us are, 
one of your eyes would see this angle and one of your eye is gonna see this angle. <laughs> like your eyes gonna go, uh... I wanna go back to the YouTube bit. Might as well not watch YouTube on this thing. Unless you're like super bored and so like whatever, I don't care about the crappy screen, just wanna watch some videos over Wi-Fi. You wouldn't be consuming content here, movies or online video. But it is a good enough screen for let's say basic communication like I have Messenger here or you know your your typical SMS. Come on. Yeah, your typical SMS, but you get the point. This thing is actually good enough for basic communication. We'll be right back after the break. Thank you for watching this ramble, super rambly video on how's the experience on such a low-end phone with such low-end specs, how Android Oreo Go is on such hardware. And honestly, if you look at it, for such a low, low price, you would get this thing, 35 US dollars. You getting a phone, a full-fledged Android phone. You can install any apps on it as long as it fits. <laughs> and as long as it's not too powerful. But let's say communication apps, your WhatsApp, Viber, Messenger, those kind of things. This thing would definitely get the job done. And of course, it will work as a phone calls text it will support mobile data it doesn't support 4g but at this point we'll even be able to handle that amount of data in the first place thank you for watching likers gonna like haters are gonna hate subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos and now i'm gonna go to the benchmarks where i would benchmark this phone versus my old galaxy s2 versus my daily driver z5 compact that i have been reading this script off well, it's not really much of a script, more of an outline for this entire video. Here goes the benchmarks. It's gonna be 